And of course, you know, uh, they they will not uh, they will not use when they when they when their translation, the New World Translation, talks about the Holy Spirit. They will not use the definite article with the Holy Spirit. It'll say, uh, for example, um, when John the Baptist was speaking of the Holy Spirit, and he's talking about Jesus baptizing uh, us with the Holy Spirit, it, the passage will leave out the definite definite article. It'll say, and he will baptize you with Holy Spirit, little h, not capital H, because they, they, they call it the Holy Spirit a force. So he will baptize you with Holy Spirit and with fire. Um, but in the New World's trans in the New World translation, it it reads almost exactly the same. And in that translation, the Jehovah's Witnesses' own translation, I read this passage of scripture to that lady, and I said, "Let me ask you a question. How does a force speak? It says right here, the Holy Spirit said, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul to the work that I have called them." How, I said, does a force speak? And she didn't have an answer. She said, I'll have to, I'll have to check with my, you know, with, 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 my, with, with the people that, I, that disciple me. But that's, this, this passage just kind of slams the door on the fact, that the, or on the fact, on, on the idea that the Holy Spirit is just some impersonal force. He is not an impersonal force. The Holy Spirit is a person. He speaks. You remember when Peter was um, up on the roof praying in Acts chapter 10, and he saw the vision of the sheet coming down. And there he saw all kinds of uh, unclean animals on the sheet. And uh, he heard a voice say to him, Peter, rise, kill and eat. And Peter said, no, Lord, my, uh, my mouth has never touched anything unclean. And he saw the in, in, and he saw the the vision again a second and a third time, and he repeated the same thing. Oh Lord, my my mouth has never touched anything unclean. And then, um, the, the 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 two visitors from Cornelius were at the door, and what happened was in Acts chapter ten, Cornelius, who was a God fear, and he was a Gentile, he was praying, and uh, an angel came to Cornelius and told him to go get Peter from from uh, from Joppa and uh, bring him back and he would explain to Cornelius and his whole family uh, the gospel and so Cornelius sent the two men to find Peter well Peter's up there and he's having that vision and the two men come and here's a knock on the door and the Holy Spirit says to Peter Peter get up go with these men for I have sent them the Holy Spirit speaks He's a person. He's not some impersonal force. He's a person. Notice also in this passage that uh, the Holy Spirit uses personal pronouns here in Acts chapter 13. He says, set apart for me, Barnabas and Saul, to the work that I, that I have called them. So the Holy Spirit uses personal pronouns. A force doesn't use personal pronouns. A force doesn't use I and me. And yet that's what the Holy Spirit does because, again, he's a person. He also, in this passage of Scripture, calls people to a specific work. He says, set apart for me, Barnabas and Saul, to the work that I have called them. So one of you know one of the things that it's 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 really easy for us to do, and it, and and it's easy for me to do. I, I've done it. It's easy for us to refer to the Holy Spirit as an it, rather than He, and and I think I think it's because of the voluntary role that the Spirit plays in the Godhead. I, I want to read you something. There's a little um. Just just a little paragraph from uh, the book that James White wrote called The Forgotten Trinity. And uh, this is what James White says in his book. He says, There's a reason why the Holy Spirit does not receive the same level and kind of attention that is focused upon the Father and the Son. It is not his purpose to attract that kind of attention to himself. Just as the Son voluntarily chose to take the role of suffering servant, as to redeem God's people, 
So, too, the Spirit has chosen to take the role as sanctifier and advocate of the people of God. But since it is the Spirit's role to direct the hearts of men to Christ and to conform them to His image, He does not seek to push Himself into the forefront and to gain attention for Himself. I think that that, that could be one of the reasons why we 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 kind of you know re, you know sometimes slip up and refer to the Holy Spirit as it rather than He, but the Holy Spirit is a person in Jesus Himself. Jesus Himself referred to the Holy Spirit as a person in John fifteen twenty six. Listen to what Jesus said. He said this, but when the Helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth, who proceeds from the Father, He will bear witness about Me. He will bear witness about me. Um, I want to point out a couple of things. I'm going to read you a couple of more verses here. But you see here in, in John 15, 26, that Jesus points out the, 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 the fact that the Holy Spirit is, is not just some impersonal force, not just some thing that floats around out there, but that the Holy Spirit is a person. And... Jesus himself calls the Holy Spirit He. But I want to read a couple of more verses. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 10-11 through 11 says this, Now God has revealed these things to us by the Spirit, for the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For who among men knows the thoughts of man except the spirit of the man that is in him? In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. Now, a force can't know thoughts. A force is just that. It's just some impersonal thing, like the wind or something like that. The wind itself has no way of knowing anything because all it is is wind. Electricity, you know, and that and that's what they say, you know, the spirit's like, yeah, he's like electricity, or he's like like gravity, he's that kind of force. He's like electricity or he's like gravity, you know, he's he's um it, it, it that's what the spirit is. That that that's what it's like. But Paul says here in first Corinthians chapter two, verses ten and eleven, that the spirit searches. A force can't search anything. A force can't Search and know the thoughts of God? Only a person can do that. This is where I was talking about before when I was telling you about um, about Peter's vision in Acts chapter 10. Let me just read you the, the one verse that I was I, I mentioned that uh, talked about the Spirit sending uh, the, the, the men. And while this is, again, this is Acts 10, 19, 19 through 20. And while Peter was pondering the vision, this vision that he had, remember the sheets coming down and the the clean and unclean animals uh, that were that that were on the sheet. Now, now remember, too, j- just as a little kind of a background, Cornelius, who sent these men, he was a Gentile, and there was a big question mark over what 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 about the Gentiles in the church? You know, um, uh, can uh, can the Gentiles be saved? The same way that the Jews are saved, do the Gentiles have uh, ha- have to be circumcised and keep the law? Um, do do the Gentiles receive what the Jews receive? Is Jesus the Messiah of the Gentiles as well? Big question mark over the church, right? Well, Cornelius is a Gentile, and here the Holy Spirit is getting ready to show Peter that the same the same Christ. The same Messiah that is the Messiah of the Jew is also the Messiah of the Gentile. He is our Messiah as well as the Jewish Messiah. He is he is our Lord as well as their Lord. And the Holy Spirit is getting ready through Peter to come upon Cornelius and his family in Acts chapter 10 and show that the Holy Spirit makes no distinction between people. Christ died not just for Jews but also for Gentiles. Jesus Christ shed his blood on the cross, not just for Jews, but also for Gentiles. And the Holy Spirit is getting ready to show the Apostle Peter that just as the the Holy Spirit fell on the Jews at Pentecost in Acts chapter 2, 
He's getting ready to do the same thing to the Gentiles. And so Peter doesn't Peter's seeing this vision and God's getting ready to reveal this to him because, you know, the Jews weren't allowed to eat anything unclean. They they were supposed to only eat the certain food, the Levitical uh the, the foods that the Levitical law allowed them to eat. Their 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 law had certain foods that they were allowed to eat, but you know, Peter sees on this sheet all kinds of animals, unclean animals. And God is telling Peter here that, uh, yeah, Peter, don't call things unclean that God has made clean. And he's getting ready to reveal to him about uh, about the Gentile, about the, you know, about the Gentiles being part of the body of Christ, just as the Jews are part of the body of Christ. And so. This is the verse, and, and while Peter was pondering the vision, Acts ten nineteen through 20, the Spirit said to him, now listen to this, this is a Spirit, this is not a force, this is a person talking here. Behold, three men are looking for you. Rise and go down and accompany them without hesitation, for I have sent them. Notice again, the Holy Spirit speaks and uses personal pronouns. An impersonal force doesn't search anything, right? Like like we saw in 1 Corinthians 2.10, where, where the Spirit searches the hearts. The Holy Spirit does, or, or, or the, a force can't send anyone to do anything. No, because the Holy Spirit is a person. And that's why it really, really, really makes me sick when I see pastors and teachers blaspheming the Spirit of God in the way that they blaspheme. Like like this video that I, I played in the beginning of the show. The Holy, the Holy Ghost hokey pokey. I mean, really? That was a real church service. People were really doing that. And, and, and you say, okay, well, you know, all right. You know, the, people are wacky. People are silly. They, they, do, they do stuff like this all over. Look, I don't care. The more I see stuff like this, the more sick I get over it. Because the whole, especially when I, especially, especially since um, our class has been studying, our Sunday school class has been studying the Holy Spirit. And the fact that the Holy Spirit uh, is none other than God, the Almighty God, third person of the Trinity. Just just it just amazes me how somebody can run around on stage like Benny Hinn and just, you know, uh just act like he's like he's in control of the spirit. It, 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 throwing people down and just and, and slaying people in the spirit, which by the way is an unbiblical it, it is unbiblical. You will not find anywhere in the Bible, you will not find an episode where the apostles were slaying people in the spirit. You just won't find it. Well, actually, oh, I take that back. Acts chapter 5. Yes, Acts chapter 5. I'm, I'm sorry. There was an incident where people were slain. In, two people were slain in the spirit. Ananias and Sapphira. Yeah, they were slain in the spirit, all right. They lied to the Holy Spirit, and they were struck dead. So they, yes, they were slain in the spirit. I take that back. But, when I say slay in the when I say slain in the spirit, I'm talking about people being knocked down and 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 falling in, in on the ground and convulsing and uh, laughing like uh, you know like crazy people and hysteria, uh, barking like dogs and just doing all kinds of wacky, weird, crazy stuff. And you start studying the Holy Spirit and who the Holy Spirit is and your view just uh, of the Holy Spirit magnifies and it really begins to really make you angry and sick when you see people miss miss uh, handling God's word and leading other people to do the same thing so anyway the Holy Spirit is a person a force doesn't do the things that the Bible says that the Holy Spirit does a force doesn't uh, you know doesn't send people to do a work. A force doesn't search and know the things of God. A force doesn't use personal pronouns. But the Holy Spirit is not a force. The Holy Spirit is a person. The Holy Spirit 